Hi everyone and welcome. We're down here in my wormery and I'm working on a couple new bins that are yet to be launched with worms. So they're really just a fresh environment into which I can move worms at some point in the near future. So they've been sitting here for almost a week now with a fresh layer of bedding, a layer of food in there, grit sprinkled in, um, some coverings to keep the moisture in. And that was really the um, the main concern of mine because it's been such a, a dry winter. Um, I've been noticing a lot of dryness in my worm bins and in my worm bags. So even though there's no worms in these bins yet, I'm going to try to maintain a good moisture level in them so that the environment can continue to um, nicely prime for the day when I finally get around to placing some new worms in here. But as long as we're on the topic of um, adding moisture to bins and I've got my water bottle handy, we're also going to take a peek inside of our newest Red Wiggler bin here, which is now at day 44 in age. And the only other times we've ever checked in on this bin has been on its initial launch and every time we've fed it. So um, I'm interested in seeing now after eight days how far the last feeding has gone because it was a shredded type of a feeding whereas normally I just take things that have been frozen, place them into my worm bins and let the worms break it down naturally. Just to try to see how things go in that one we had shredded the food. So I'm thinking that after eight days we should see a pretty good chunk of that food gone by now. But hopefully between that and leftovers from the previous feedings there's hopefully enough food in that to go another week or so. But just in case it's needed, we're going to add some moisture. So let's get that thing out here on the bench and see how the moisture situation is in there. So I think it is mainly because of the way I had shredded the food in their last feeding um, that I'm interested in seeing how things are progressing. Um, on, the, on the World Composting channel, there was an interesting time lapse posted comparing how the worms react to being given whole chunks of food or you know kind of small chopped food versus food that's actually been ground down and blended into a puree and on that video you can clearly see that the worms um, just gobble up the food once it's been pureed and um, in the in the previous feeding where the pureed food was given to them that stuff was um, pretty much placed right out here into the middle and there probably wouldn't be many signs of it other than the large number of worms hanging out right beneath where the food was um, I guess enjoying whatever little bit remains still so I, I'm not really too worried about letting these guys go another week or so because you know not only is the food that you give them edible but basically the entire contents of the bin are edible there's nothing to prevent them from eating all these leaves and stuff like that so um so i, I don't want to reverse my original game plan of not feeding them today today i'd really like to just focus on verifying that things are adequate to go another week without my intervention and at most if needed do something about addressing the moisture in the bin you can clearly see fair numbers of cardboard bits and paper shreds throughout this material that I'm picking through and obviously all that dark brown stuff <laughs> um, is for the most part worm castings. Uh, I, I might also here and there be seeing some coffee grounds. Sometimes I wonder if some of the coffee grounds that I put in here um, last a little bit longer than expected. Even though they're tiny bite-sized morsels, you would think that the worms would... Um, gobble it up one two three but sometimes it seems like the coffee does sit for a while before it finally gets consumed so I'll assume that there's probably still scattered bits of coffee in here um, in addition to some of these tougher items 
which would not get eaten so quickly, the stem of a banana. Um, clearly getting broken down and softening up, but still here uh, for them to work on and continue working on. And as you can see, all, all kinds of little sticks and stems from all the leaves that have been used to build this bin. And I'm sure if we picked around a little bit more, we would probably find other um, bits and pieces too. Another banana stem with a, a worm diving down into it to, <laughs> to chew it out from the inside. That's what it seems like they like to do. So um, there's a couple worm hotels here right down the middle of the banana stem. <laughs> They're moving in. So I'm not going to worry too much about this bin because I think I like what I see. I think I see a nice busy um, feeding zone where at least where the feeding zone had been and throughout that feeding zone I'm finding scraps of food which I think should sustain them for a number of days longer. Slightly tougher bits and pieces of food that they would require extra time to, to ultimately break down and tons and tons of bedding as well which they can also consume no problem so I think from the food perspective we are safe letting this thing go for another week and at that point it will have been 14 to 15 days two weeks since the last feeding and um, I'm hoping that by that time we'll see a lot more uh, progress in any of these types of food scraps that we found hopefully see very little or none of that and um, presumably a bunch of the um, bedding being converted over into castings as well so down within the feeding zone things look great nothing to worry about um, let's just see if it's necessary to add any moisture out here on the far edges it feels moist enough when you start poking your fingers down and I guess just to look at it it doesn't look too bad um, right off the bat down in the lower corner here even though the material does appear somewhat dry you can see there's worms venturing in and out of it right up to the very outer edge so it's definitely not too dry yet nevertheless since I've got the water bottle in my hand and I know this thing's going to sit here for another week, I'm definitely going to start applying some moisture down into this outer edge. Alright, that looks pretty good. Let's just cover this up and also give that material that we used to cover it up with a little shot. And now we can check out the other side. Well, here I'm not seeing any worms hanging around, but I am seeing huge amounts of cardboard and paper bedding materials. It doesn't feel any drier though, so it doesn't seem like they shouldn't be here or I shouldn't expect to see them here. But I'm not seeing any worms on this side for some reason. Well, okay, here's a couple. There's one over there. There's one that fell out of the material. And there's a couple more over there in the corner as well. So let's see if we can try to boost the appeal of this side a little bit by adding some water here too. And maybe I'm gonna take some of this paper and try to bury it a little bit. It seems like if it just sits on the surface, it has a, a huge tendency to dry out. So while it works good as bedding, it doesn't, to me at least, seem like it works very well as a, a topping material that um, can help with the retention of moisture. So it's probably best to use shredded paper down underneath the surface if you're going to use it. Um, although I've seen a lot of people use it as a top coating as well, and they have no problems perhaps because they um, use lids on their containers where um, whereas I don't these containers don't have lids so I just cover up with sheets of cardboard and paper so 
So I've got to say I feel a lot more peace of mind about this bin going for another week this way with the uh, with the little boost of moisture that we gave it. But the way we've been doing lately, as you've seen in my previous videos, is that I've been trying to also apply water to the paper coverings that I place on top of my material within the bin because these pieces of paper, although they don't seem like much, they are dry and they're going to just wick moisture into themselves. So if it's possible to give it a little bit of moisture, just to try to at least get it to the dampness level of what you want the bin to be, and at least you know it's not going to try to suck up moisture out of the bin, and, um, and the bin's moisture content should stay pretty comfortable a lot longer. So that's usually as deep as I go. On top of that, I've got this piece of uh, paper bag, folded up paper bag, and then on top of that, the cardboard. So um, the only thing I wanted to try, um, which I've not yet done before, is uh, trying to put a little piece of bubble wrap onto the, the bin. Because, you know, it's been a few feedings now where on each occasion I've realized that this bin needed a little extra shot of moisture and I gave it what it needed. Um, and now too, now that we're at a nice level of moisture, um, I'm going to take some of this bubble wrap that I had laying around the house. I believe I'm going to use this one with the larger bubbles on it. And the only reason being that I've got more of it around than this stuff with the small bubbles. So I'm just going to use what I have the most of. And on top, I'm going to place the, the bubble wrap. And it's not perfectly fitted. It's not reaching all the way out to the ends. But I believe just that extra layer of um, material that the moisture cannot permeate should probably help a lot with retain, retaining moisture in this bin. So we're going to let this thing ride another week or so. And at that point, it'll be the longest period of time that we've waited between feedings. We've always fed on 10-day intervals. On this go-around, it's going to be somewhere in the 14 to 15-day range. And at that point, this bin is going to be 49, 50 days old. So um, let's check back on this in about another week's time. And until then, let's just keep our fingers crossed that the moisture level... Um, stabilizes now that we've got one extra layer of protection try, trying to keep the moisture down within the bin. So that's it for today everyone. Um, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, like always, please remember to give me a thumbs up and also consider becoming a subscriber to the channel as well. That's really appreciated too. Uh, thanks a lot everyone. Thanks for keeping me company and have a great day. Bye now.